the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Another year, another iPhone, but this time it's the same. Okay, I kid, but it kind of is the same. Now we do have a 0.2 inch size increase up to 6.9 inches on the Pro Max. Nice. And one thing I miss about going to the Apple store and picking up the phone, no Apple bag. I like the Apple bag, makes you feel special, especially when you're dropping top dollar on this thing year after year for <laughs> size does matter at the end of the day, right? They say it doesn't, but I think that's a big fat lie. Anywho, we got the nice box here looking good. They did make it a bit thinner, but as you can see right here, we do have the nice color of the iPhone, obviously based on this, you can tell I had to get it. This is kind of the main reason I got this with a couple of other little reasons that I'm hoping will pay off in the end. But when the 15 Pro Max came out, they didn't have gold. This time they got Desert Titanium, which is kind of gold. So it's close enough. Gonna look better than basically gray, hopefully. So let's see what we got. The box is thinner, although I feel like they could make it really thin. I mean, just get rid of the cable because it's a 2.0 cable in the first place. We don't need it. We don't need it. If you're not given a 3.0 cable, just don't even bother at that point. But they could easily cut this down and we'll see what's inside. Open it up. And here we go. Actually looking very, very nice actually. Looking, that looks nice. I mean, that's basically gold. Maybe like a starlight type color. It looks great. Fantastic, nice frosted back, fusion camera set up on the back. Over here on the right side, we got that power button along with the camera control, period. That's all, camera control, it's not a button. Well, it's technically a button, but it's, according to Apple, it's not a button, it's a control, period. So, we got it right there. I mean, I mean it's clicky, it is indented more, as you can see, it's pretty flat compared to the power button that sticks out, obviously to prevent pressing it in your pocket. I don't know, I'm just glad they got rid of that ultra wideband antenna opening thing on the side and they integrated it in the frame, that's nice. The frame is titanium, got that nice goldish color, desert titanium color, whatever. That does look nice though, very, very nice, loving it. And over here we got the action button, which over the last year <laughs> on the 15 Pro Max, how many times have I used it? Couldn't tell you. I pretty much never used it. I set it up to translate, but it's really clunky and sometimes doesn't even work for that, so I hardly ever use that. But we also do have the volume rocker down on the bottom, USB Type C port with USB 3.0 speeds, microphone, speaker, all that good stuff, and that that's it. But that color is looking nice. I am digging that. Now let's peel this off the top. All right, big screen here. We actually have the 6.9 inch screen. Nice compared to the 15 Pro Max of yesteryear, which, I, I mean, that's actually very negligible. It's very negligible. Let me, let me figure this out. Okay, there we go. It is about, let's see, if I had to guess, I'd say it's about 0.2 inches taller. You know, give or take, whatever. That, it's about that much taller, not that much. It's, I, I mean, somehow it actually feels a bit lighter. I think it is a tad bit lighter. I didn't think it would be noticeable, but it does feel lighter. And the size is basically the same, feels good. I think it's a little bit wider as well. Oh yeah, if I had to guess, it's probably about 0.1 <laughs> inches wider. I don't know, I'm just completely guessing. But it is nice, bigger screen in basically the same form factor is great because we do have smaller bezels as well, even though these bezels are already pretty small. I mean, how much smaller can you go? I don't know. But anywho, let's get this powered on. Got the 2.0 USB-C cable. Like I said, never even gonna use it, so whatever. Then we also do have some papers in here and no Apple stickers. I don't even know what these, I never even look at these. I, I, I don't know what it is. I'm not even sure why these are included, to be honest. You, you probably don't even have to, I mean, it's a, look how thin this is. Here's, here's my point. They can get rid of all of this and make this box half the size. I mean, look at this, this is, this is how big it is. See the difference? They, they could easily cut this box down smaller, Apple. What are you doing? You're slacking over there. But anywho, no SIM ejection tool, no headphones, no nothing, but to be fair, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna use it anyways, so I do not actually care. Now the point is, why did I get this phone? Everyone already knows what's about it for the past month. We have 
an iPhone 15 Pro Max in a new color, unless you didn't get the new color. Then you got the same colors, which are basically the same, a little, little bit different tone as far as the natural titanium I've heard. But taking a look at this, looks great. Looks literally the same. Although I like this better now. I will say this does definitely have a warm tone to it, depending on the lighting and the angle. Sometimes it does have a pink hue to it. But all in all, I do like it because it does look gold. Now, some people might feel like it's a little bit too feminine, but I don't care. It's gold and that's good enough for me. But why did I get this? One, I wanted the gold phone, got it. What other features do we have? Camera control, like I said, eh, I have been using it and I am not a fan of it so far because I'll show you one reason right now actually why I don't like it. Explain this to me. We got the screen locked. I'm pulling it out of my pocket. Let me press this to open the camera. Doesn't open. The screen has to be awake and always on display does not count as being awake. So I'm pulling it out of my pocket trying to take a picture, press it doesn't work, you gotta press it a second time and then it'll open up. You know, that's fine. Now using it, it's pretty cool. It's all right, although I feel like it takes time to do stuff. Like if I'm like, oh, I gotta get the lens. Let me get over to the five, okay. I feel like it's much faster to just be like this, tap, 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 tap. Plus when you press the button, you can possibly shake the camera a little bit. It's a lot easier to just, just like that, you know, whatever. We do have a better ultra wide at 48 megapixels, so that, that's, that's cool and all. Uh, lenses right there. And that's a very nice looking image. Nice and close, high quality, it looks good. So, I mean, the camera's nice. Now, the thing that I was most excited about was the new microphones. We got that studio microphone set up where it has wind reduction and you can change the algorithm to make it in frame, sound like a studio, all that. Now, the thing is, I did notice something. As far as the settings go, you have a couple of options as far as recording videos on the camera. So we actually do have record sound, we have spatial audio, you can allow audio playback so you don't have to stop playing your music, and also wind noise reduction. Now here's the thing, spatial audio, even if you just have it on standard and don't add the in-studio or in-frame or whatever to have it focus on a subject or whatever it does, I feel like it just sounds robotic and sounds kind of weird. Now I guess it is trying to be spatial, but it just doesn't sound good to me. The good news is you can switch it back to stereo and it sounds just like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is great. And the good news is you can still have wind noise reduction turned on. So you still get that feature that I was hoping for because any help against the wind is great, especially when I'm doing like a travel video and it's windy outside. I didn't bring my microphone with the dead cat on it and I'm trying to get some usable audio in my video. This is gonna definitely come in handy, even if it's only slightly gonna help. Any help will be really appreciated. But spatial audio, I feel like I'm gonna have that turned off more often than not because it just doesn't sound great to me. Hopefully it improves in the future, hopefully. Of course I am in a quiet studio environment right now, but for an example, this is what I sound like with standard spatial audio recording. This is what I sound like when you turn in frame audio recording on in spatial settings. This is what I sound like with studio audio recording in spatial settings. And then this is what I sound like with cinematic mode in spatial audio settings. And to take it even a step further, this is what I sound like with the standard stereo audio recording you get from any other iPhone. I just feel like it sounds a bit better and less robotic. This is actually a pretty unscientific test of the wind reduction technology using stereo audio recording. I'm right in front of a fan and I have the wind blowing on me really fast right now. So hopefully you're able to hear me without the wind getting involved. And of course, for comparison's sake, this is stereo audio recording without wind reduction turned on. Now, other than that, why else did I get this phone? That's literally it. So we already know everything about the phone. Everyone's seen the leaks. We already saw what happened when it came out. We saw the keynote, we saw all that. So what we're gonna focus on now, other than all the specs and how this phone works and everything, what we're gonna do is take a look at the color, the desert titanium, the faux gold color, and we're gonna compare it to the gold of yesteryears and see if it's gold enough for the gold enthusiasts out there such as myself. The iPhone 14 Pro Max in natural titanium. Over here on the right side, we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max in stainless steel gold. And right here smack dab in the middle, we have the all new reigning champion, the iPhone 16 Pro Max in desert titanium. So as you can see, taking a quick look, obviously natural titanium basically looks gray. 
you're looking at it, it's basically gray. Sometimes it looks a little different depending on the way the lights hit it and what temperature of the room you're in, yada yada, doesn't matter. Point is, if we move over to this side where we have the stainless steel gold as well as the desert titanium, you can see the backs are similar. Now, I'm not sure if it's coming across for you, but you can see that the Desert Titanium does have a pinker hue to it, a little bit of a warmer tone compared to the back panel of the 12 Pro Max, which is kind of to be expected because it's not technically gold. I'm not sure why it's not even technically starlight, but you know, whatever, it's all kind of the same thing. But if we take a look at the camera rings, they, I mean, to be fair, they it kind of looks like gold. Now, to be fair, again, the stainless steel is more chrome and shiny. This is more of like a brushed finish. So it doesn't look as pronounced as far as gold goes. Now granted, it's not gold to begin with, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Anywho, if we take a look at the sides, that's where things get interesting because they actually look kind of the same. I mean, see, it's basically gold. Look at that. I, I can't really tell the difference. One's shiny and one's more matte. What do you expect? It's gold, kind of. That's basically gold. Look at that. That's nice. Seeing them side by side like this is really impressive. Now we put a side by side like this. Yeah. I definitely do prefer the dynamic island over the notch. The notch just looks so dated now, but very nice. Oh yeah, this one also lightning, USB-C obviously. But as far as the color goes, it's, it is gold. Now, like I said, it could somewhat come over as a rose gold depending on the lighting, but it's pretty nice. I like it. I'm definitely happy with it. Some people are like, oh, I just send it back. It's pink. Anywho, right here, I also got a stainless steel Apple watch, which is gold. Although to be fair, this sometimes looks silver. Like, I don't know. But anyways, we'll put that next to it. What do we got? Basically the same. So, see, like, it's basically gold, so no no problems here. It's literally the same thing. Just one's glossy and one isn't, and one's called desert. But it honestly, it, it's basically gold. I have no problems with it. I like it. It looks fantastic. It's very nice. Lightweight, good looking screen. That gold or desert, whatever, looks fine. Although sometimes it does look kind of pink but I'm here for it. But anyways, now that we got to the bottom of this and figured out that this is basically gold, especially when comparing it side by side with the gold of yesteryear, what do you think? Are you happy with the gold, or excuse me, desert titanium that you got, or did you happen to get a different color? Maybe you didn't even get the Pro because you wanted the fancy, bright, vibrant colors of the basic 16 series, although you're missing the 5X telephoto lens, which I actually do like and get a lot of use out of, so that's why I definitely have to stick to the Pro. What else is there? I mean, there's not that much of a difference this time. It's kind of amazing. But we do have the bigger screen with 120 hertz versus 60 hertz, and a lot of people, to be fair, I feel like it doesn't matter. Obviously, I would take more hertz, but it's not the biggest deal ever, so I don't know why everyone's making such a big deal about it. Obviously, if you're coming from 120, you might be like, eh, I don't want to go back down. That's what they want you to think. Exactly. But all in all, very happy with this. Looks great, feels great. And even though it is a slight upgrade, you know, there's not much more you can really do. It's, we're pretty much at the tippity top of smartphones right now, unless you start folding it, which personally, not for me, but maybe it's for you. But I'm happy with what I got. Okay.